So this is a laughingly unrealistic and exaggerated scene. You look at it and it's kind of mean, you know, how can one person beat up all those with such accuracy? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Oh. It's a legitimate question though. Why is the Indian cinema so filled with such scenes? It seems to be an integral part of the biggest portion of their movies. Well, the answer is not so different from the answer to why does Hollywood have genres dedicated to spaceships, superheroes, and super fast cars doing crazy stuff. They are a cultural fantasy. Let's take one example in America. Spaceships. They are pop culture. You'll find it everywhere. I'm from a really, really early point. The Twilight Zone episodes dated back to the 50s had a lot of space stuff, and they were in black and white. It's just a very culturally integrated idea in the US due to political and scientific circumstances that tied the nation to this. Same goes to the superhero genre. It's just another culture fantasy Hollywood embraced, capitalized on it, and made a cult-like following for it, because it's in the artistic culture of the US to escape in your thoughts to a world where you are limitless, or at least close to being so, by powers you acquired somehow. It's in the culture. Okay? Okay. So now you need to ask yourself, what about the super exaggerated ultra masculine fights that make them a cultural fantasy in Indian movies? It's the nature of India itself. Indian people have cultures that go back to thousands of years. There were always agrarian people with villages, with a village system, with a caste system, with an extremely rigid social regime that results in certain fantasies that persist even in modern day India. That's the culture part. It's about the tales of the man hero, not a superhero, a perfectly normal human who's just distinctively strong, righteous, in control, who will rise from nothing and be stronger than any oppressor or villain. Without taking a pill, without going to space, without wearing a cool costume, he's just a real powerful human. And that's the fantasy part. You can see clearly from how the common Indian engaged with such a fantasy in the cinema hall. <laughs> See, if the hero wins and beats as many bad men as he can, it means that the audience wins too in the same fantasy. They know they won't be able to do it, they know it's just an exaggerated claim and no one will be able to do it, but they sure as hell would like to see it happening. I don't want to sound patronizing, especially that I'm not even a native speaker, but it's called escapism, and to each their own. Okay, so as a Hollywood viewer, you don't mind seeing that and actually loving it. As far as you're told that, hey, this is a musical, it's like a disclaimer, we will do everything in song and dance and you will love it. And without this disclaimer, you're not to like any movie with people hopping out of nowhere, dancing and singing, and it'll be a major turn off, right? Well, that's all about it, the general rule for Indian cinema, especially Bollywood. Yes, because Bollywood is just one Indian cinema and the most popular one, but there are more Indian cinemas within India. We will get to that later in a separate video, subscribe for more, please. The general rule about it is that every movie is a musical, unless otherwise stated. It's the leading genre and the default for Bollywood. So it's really expected and even anticipated to see frequent dance numbers and brilliantly choreographed ones. That brings us back to the culture. Song and dance is just everything in India. There are classical dances in India that are a form of worship. Music is also worship. It's as old as India itself, you can never express anything better than a song and a dance. This turned out to be one of the biggest industries in India. The movie songs are a leading entertainment industry. And you can just check that by the amount of views and traction they get online. And they shape the Indian pop culture in a really remarkable way. It's more than just people randomly appearing and dancing because they don't make sense. It's because the default genre is musical. And Bollywood itself never mentions that because for the local viewers, it's just a given. Why would you state the obvious? Okay, this one needs an explanation though. It has recently changed, but still expected when it comes to commercial or super popular hits to be alarmingly long. This is a purely socioeconomic aspect. The majority of Indian people are obsessed with cost effectiveness, in addition to the people who live in poverty. Cinema tickets cost money. You need this money to be used in the most efficient and cost effective way, or else you won't want to spend it, or in some cases you won't even afford to spend it. That's when the movie duration comes in. Think like a producer. 
If I make an over three hours movie, that means I'll have time to fit in more dance numbers. Side stories. We can go story A, B, C, and D. It will fit right in. We can make the fight scene that we discussed even lengthier, for the crowd to go wild for even longer. The endorphins would be pumped enough in your blood to say, oh that movie ticket was worth its bucks. Shorter movies at a certain time and age, just meant a scam. Why would I even pay for a movie that will last for less than two hours? That's not cost effective. It started out as making fiscal sense to being just the most popular format. With the rise of streaming services in India, this mentality and format really came down in frequency and number. As you don't have to pay one ticket for one movie and bet it will be good, you can just have a subscription and don't care about the length because you can watch as many movies as you want. And here goes the mystery. I shouldn't be even discussing this one, but any Hollywood viewer saying that about Indian movies is either unaware of the whole rom-com genre or is just straight up in denial about Hollywood in general. Go binge watch some Adam Sandler or something and come tell me that again. We got a code Romeo. Repeat code Romeo. Let's move on from that point. It's really irritating. This one is entirely not true. Indian society is such a complicated society with intense diversity and social aspects that reflects hugely on their arts. Don't forget that they are the world's largest democracy and that comes with a very messy political scene that's always a rich area in the cinema industry. I took the liberty of recommending some of the famous influential Indian movies. That might change your mind. Check them out. Well, I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't hate Indian cinema or that you have to like it. Some Indians even hate it and never watch Indian cinema. That's a personal preference. It's about actually helping you to get the rationale and nature of arguably the largest film industry in the world. At least if you're gonna hate it, make sure that you really do and that you don't just misunderstand it. I always recommend watching international cinema as it makes you familiar with the world you live in. Living in isolation is just impossible now as the internet happened. You might want to try that out more. And don't be afraid of reading subtitles, it's easy. And it'll become no nuisance in no time. And remember international features now win Oscars and Golden Globes. They are quite good. And yes, yeah, just a point of view. Subscribe for more point of views.